Welcome to Kyle Anthony's UFC betting show. I am Kyle Anthony and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the prediction show for UFC on ESPN plus five, Darren Till versus Jorge Masvidal. We're going to talk about a free play. We're also going to get into our best bet play, which is currently for purchase at Wager Talk. Link down in the description. Take a look at it. And as well as we're going to talk about the main event after we talk about the free play. I want to get into that. A lot of people have been talking about that. Check me out on Twitter uh, at Mr. UFC Vegas. People have been talking about it on there. They, they want me to get a little bit more uh, into the uh, the main event. It was not a play that I was really diving at. I was back and forth. We will get into that um, after we talk about the free play. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe. Like this video. Always helps the, the channel grow and lets me know what content you guys are enjoying. And again, continue the conversation down below in the comment section. We will talk all throughout the next couple days and through the uh, the event. So always I'm active down in the comments section. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the free play. Now the free play is between Dominic Reyes and Vulcan Ozdemir. Now currently the line, you've got uh, Dominic Reyes, 10-0. He is minus 245, roughly. I've seen it up to to, to minus 285. I've seen him down a little bit to the, the minus 220s, 230. So definitely shop around, take a look and see where you can get your best price. Same with Vulcan Ozdemir. I've seen him. Uh, he's right now I'm seeing him at plus 200. He was up to plus 240, uh, you know, down a little bit under the 200. So definitely bouncing around on all different books. So wherever you like, definitely make sure you shop it around. But so Really with this fight here, this was a fight that I really wanted to dive into. I looked at, you know, again, their past fights, things that I liked that they did, things that I didn't like that they did. And the first thing that you're going to take a look at is the frame of Dominic Reyes. Now, Dominic Reyes is 6'4", big frame for the division, a lot of power, and definitely a lot of hype behind this guy. Now, everybody loves the guys that are, you know, have that zero in the loss column that always brings a little bit more mystique to them. But he definitely has a nice skill set. And then you've got Vulcan Ozdemir on the other side. Uh, 6'1", got power, and he's coming off a loss from Daniel Cormier. Now, he had that opportunity uh, to fight Daniel, and he had an opportunity um, against uh, um, uh, Anthony Smith. He had two nice nice opportunities there, big fights. Obviously, the Daniel Cormier fight did not go his way. He was dominated um, uh, for, for two rounds, choked out. And then he fought Anthony Smith. Now, I don't really want to get into the Daniel Cormier fight too much, just because there really isn't much to break down. That was a fight. I'll talk about my feelings on that a little bit later, but there's really not much to break down that fight. It was lopsided. You know, Daniel basically kind of baited him in that first round, and then that second round uh, ended up putting him away with the submission that second round. But, it, but the fight against Anthony Smith, I thought it was an interesting fight, one that I really want to talk about a little bit. Now, now that fight with Anthony Smith, you got two guys. You have Smith, who is really on a trajectory going upward, doing phenomenal, has a lot of power. We saw what he did against John Jones, um, didn't get that victory there. But he, he really started stacking up some nice victories, beating um, and knocking out brutally uh, some, some veterans and some ex-champions and um, uh, Shogun and also Evans. So he definitely looked the part when he was coming into this fight against uh, Vulcan Ozdemir. And I actually like Vulcan Ozdemir in that fight. I thought that he was going to be able to do a little bit more. Now, in that fight early... Vulcan was was definitely doing some damage. He was really working Anthony Smith. He worked his legs a little bit. You saw that Anthony Smith was really showing a lot of that damage there. And you definitely saw the second to third round, Vulcan Ozdemir completely changed. Now, the big thing against Vulcan Ozdemir is his gas tank. And that's something that I am really seeing throughout. Obviously, you haven't been been able to really see it when he's knocking guys out in the first round. But that fight there, I thought there was a telling sign there that you could see that the, the switch just turns off. And he's really not able to do very much. And was he, and he basically gave up uh, a great uh, a positioning to Anthony Smith early, uh, early in that third round. And then Anthony Smith really went to work and got the submission in that third round. And to me, that's something in a, in, in a, in a big fight that's coming up. And a guy that really presses forward and looks for those big shots, that's something to worry about. But before that, you know, he went out there and he had... Two brutal knockouts that he was able to um, knock out uh, Jimmy Manawa and Misha Serkinov. And, and Misha and Jimmy, both those guys, definitely big time power. Those guys are, you know, those guys definitely are, are, had some wins behind them. 
But the one thing that you take a look at when you're breaking it down with Jimmy Manoa and breaking down Misha is the fact that they have glass chins. I mean, there is no doubt about it that those guys have consistently shown, even from those fights. Now, up until that time, those guys, you know, they, they didn't really have that. They didn't, it wasn't really a, a, a label that was on their names. It was really just more of, um, you know, they're power punchers and they go in there and, and, and they're willing to kill or be killed. And this is something now that is really starting to follow through with Jimmy Manoa's career that he definitely has a glass chin. Same with Misha. I mean, he's a tough guy. He likes to get it to the ground. He's definitely got a lot of ability there. But if you tap into these guys' chins, especially the power that Ozdemir has, the guys are going down and the fight will end. So there is definitely something to take away when you take a look at those two big guys and they're the big name brands. I mean, obviously, there's a, there's some kind of name behind Jimmy Manoa and Misha Serkinov. There's definitely a name. Not a household name, but the guys that are betting are going to know who these people are. So that's something that I think kind of downgrades Ozdemir. And also the big thing for me, when you really take a look at his rise, uh, Ozdemir's rise, was I think that the UFC really rushed him. I think they pushed him forward a lot because at that time, they did not have many big names to really put up for a title shot. And, you know, you, you've got a guy that, you know, was going out there, he's 15 and three, and at the time he was 15 and one, when, before he lost to Anthony Smith and to DC. So, you know, there's a name, there, there's, there's definitely that mystique because you're knocking out some guys that have that older name to them. So even something like Anthony Smith, Anthony, Anthony Smith, same kind of situation where he knocked out a lot of older guys and yes, Ozdemir, he did sneak by, but we're going to talk a little more about that. But but then Anthony Smith steps up against a guy that is an elite fighter in John Jones, although, again, John Jones makes everybody look bad. But in that fight, he was dominated in that fight. It was, you know, John Jones never went for the kill, but he just picked him apart over the five rounds. Now, you take a look at Dominic Reyes. Now, Dominic Reyes, again, big guy for the division, 10-0, 4-0, in his UFC career, um, and most recently he beated Ovin St. Pru. Now, OSP, I actually am a fan of OSP, OSP as in not just watching him, but I think that his skill set is fantastic. I think that also he, he he's he's underrated. He, he has fought consistently top-level guys throughout his career, and he's beaten some and he's lost to some, but I, that was a big test for Reyes, and Reyes went out there, and it was a lopsided victory for him. Reyes easily got that victory, and that's very impressive for a guy who is well-rounded in OSP. You know he's got some good chokes. You know he's got fantastic kicks, very strong, big, also big for the division as well. So that was a nice telling sign for him to go out there and get a victory against OSP. And then you've got, um, before that, he had two nice knockouts, Reyes. So he's coming into the UFC. There's a lot of steam behind him. Now, the big thing for me that I like about what Reyes does and the difference between what Ozdemir uh, does as well. Now, they both have big power. That's a given. But you take a look at what Reyes does. He is very relaxed when he hurts somebody. Now, yes, he's knocked some guys out early, but even against OSP, he went out there, and even when he's hurt, he doesn't overexert himself. He doesn't allow himself to be exposed for a counter shot. He's comfortable enough where the situation is and just continues to pick the opponent apart. Now, of course, if the knockouts are there, the knockouts are there. But he is very relaxed, very patient, and I think that his striking and his combinations and the way that he, he really moves forward is very calculated compared to Ozdemir, where Ozdemir's looking for the big shot. He is looking for the one big shot, put you down, and that's it. And he's looking for that early in that first round. And a kind of guy like Ozdemir, who you've got a guy like him that if he doesn't get that, that, that first big punch in that first round, puts you away, the gas tank starts to push down. Now, the other side of it, you've got Reyes, who when he's patient, that's great, but he also trains at elevation, at very high elevation. So that's the kind of thing that he said he really, really has worked hard for. Although it, I don't really think that that was an issue for him, but he has said, I don't ever want to be in a situation where my gas tank isn't there. And I, that was a specific thing that he had worked on with his team, with his coaches, with his training, and said, I have to just make sure that in this division, if I'm getting pulled to deep water, I don't ever want to uh, be gassing out. Now, not only that, but he's got great range, and I love his use of elbows. He's got fantastic use of elbows. He was able to put a lot of damage in some past fights and utilize that. So I think a lot to do 
with the way that you're matching these guys up. Now you take a look at the betting side of things. You've got Reyes minus 245. That's the line that I got it at. I do like Reyes here. I think that this is a great spot to take him. I think Ozdemir is very overrated. I don't think that, you know, this is a guy that you're going to see consistently. I think he's going to be a guy that that was his peak. The DC was his peak within this division. I think he's going to fight some big fights. I think he's going to have a lot of opportunity moving forward. He's a younger guy. But I don't think that the well-roundedness of Reyes, because Reyes is able to take this to the ground if he needs to. And he's been able to do that. And he's been able to show some ground and pound. So he's, if he's able to really take and put the pieces together in this fight, I think he's going to be calm. He's going to be relaxed. He's going to know that that first round... Ozdemir is going to be dangerous. Even, of course, Reyes is dangerous, but Ozdemir is going to be dangerous. I think in this kind of fight here, you take uh, Reyes. I think it, it could be a knockout, but he can also look to push this fight deeper. And again, it went to a decision against OSP. It doesn't mean it can't be the decision here, but I think that that first round, Ozdemir is going to look for the lot of pressure, look to try to get uh, Reyes against the cage, but Reyes is a big guy, and I don't think he's going to be able to really manipulate his body movement that easily, and I think that that's going to be maybe second round somewhere where you're going to start to see Ozdemir start to fade. You're going to see some big shots from Reyes, and that's going to be where he gets it. So as my free play, I'm going to have Dominic Reyes in the, uh, I guess it's the main card on ESPN plus four. So that is my free play. Now, the other one I wanted to talk about, and actually, you know what? The other one I do like to throw that in there, although the odds have really started to move up, um, is Nathaniel Wood. I mean, this is another kid that I think is just the UFC wants him to win. He's got a very winnable fight um, coming up. I think this is something that they really want to see. They, they, this is almost, I feel, going to be a showcase fight for him. I think Nathaniel Wood is going to be uh, easy money. It's, it's, it's been moving up. You know, I, I got it at plus, I'm sorry, uh, minus 275. Now it's up to plus, um, I keep saying plus, minus 300. And it's even, I've even seen it at minus 330. So I got it at minus uh, 285, I think it was. So I'm happy with that spot, but you're starting to see that line really creep up and the hype is there. The money's flowing in. So if you can get a good price on him, I think he's well worth throwing in parlays, helping you with the parlay odds a little bit, bet betting him straight. That's a little bit, you know, obviously you've got to lay a lot more juice, but I like sprinkling in a guy as strong as him that will go out there and win and get him into a parlay. Again, I always do. And like I always say, out of my allotted money per event, 80% of it goes in my best bet play. And the other 20% roughly is going on parlays, value plays, my free play, and really tiering my bets helping me with the parlay odds and as well as the odds of the fighter. Um, so then the other one I want to talk about just real quickly is just go over is the main event. Now, a lot of you guys were talking to me about it and saying, you know, there has been wide range of, of what people like here between Darren Till and Jorge Masvidal. And this is going to be a great fight. But the first thing that you take a look at in this fight is they're talking about right away going in the middle of the cage and just brawling which is something that's very interesting where you take a look at someone like Darren Till in his last fight against Tyron Woodley, he did the complete opposite. Um, one of my best bets was Tyron Woodley in that fight at about plus 130, which I thought was crazy odds. We got that victory there. But in that fight, you take a look at it. I mean, Tyron Woodley and, uh, you know, really just, I mean, I'm sorry, Darren Till just really just didn't really do anything. That first round, I don't even think he landed a significant strike, if I'm correct, um, in that fight, in the round and a half that that was, or round and a quarter that that fight was. So that's something where Till says, I need to come into this fight. I need to push forward right away. I need to, he wants, and this is what he said, that I am not going to be happy unless I get a first round knockout. So that kind of falls into Jorge Masvidal's strategy where he loves to brawl. He is a brawler. He definitely is a technical fighter, but he loves to stand in the middle and scrap. Now you take a look at the odds. You got Darren Till right now at minus 260. And then you've got Masvidal at plus 210. Um, Darren Till is 17 and 1, and Masvidal is 32 and 13. A lot of cage experience. And you may also recognize um, those who don't know Masvidal, if you just Google his name, you can see him on a bunch of backyard street fights before he went pro. Pretty crazy stuff if you really take a look at it. And, and I actually had watched some of his videos before he even got into the UFC. I was like, who is this crazy guy? And really some crazy stuff, bare knuckle stuff in the backyard fighting around people. It's pretty crazy, so take a look at that. Um, but if you take a look at these two guys, now Masvidal is coming off back-to-back -back losses. 
And that's something, he fought two specialists. He fought Thompson, he fought Damian Maya, two special, you got a ground specialist, and then you've got a karate specialist. Something that's very tough uh, to really train for, and multiple guys have said it. Even Darren Till, who beat uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, even said, you know, he's a very hard guy, uh, Thompson's a very hard guy to really train for, just because what he presents, his cage movement, his movement, his his combinations, the way he works his kicks, the angles that he's working his kicks, I mean, he, uh, honestly, he's one of the best when it comes to karate overall um, for, uh, for Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, but then he was able to really, before that, there was a lot of talk about Masvidal and really starting to to, to move towards the title. He had three straight wins and two were knockouts. He had, uh, beat uh, Donald Cerrone, Jake Ellenberger, and Ross Pearson. Some quality names in there, no doubt some quality names. But the big thing with Masvidal is his slick boxing. I mean, this guy has great boxing, strong kicks, and he's got great level-changing kicks. He's able to work the leg and then come up to the body, even with the head. I mean, he's very much able to move that around. And I think when you mix that up with his strike, with his, with his boxing, that's a lethal combination. And something also that's big is where he trains. I love taking a look at what guys do. Uh, I'm sorry, what training camps that these guys come from. And I think that's always going to be a very telling sign. I think that's something that's very overlooked in a betting perspective. And I have heard a couple of you guys also talk about that as well, because, you know, that is something that's big. You know, when we're talking, we will go back and forth. Oh, this guy's from this camp. This guy's from this camp. That is very important. And he comes from ATT. A, that's a top camp. One of the best in the world. A lot of great fighters there. And that strategies and the things that you can really work together and piece together with a team like that, I think is going to be something that's going to be coming into this fight. Now, Darren Till on the other side of it, coming off of a Woodley loss for the title, had six straight wins, beat Stephen Wonderboy Thompson in a very close decision, knocked out Donald Cerrone uh, early, I believe it was the first round against Donald Cerrone. So he's looked great. There's a lot of great things that he does. And he's got fantastic Muay Thai. He's really able to use those elbows, use his knees. He's got that leverage. He's big for the division also. And he definitely squeezes into the welterweight division. He could easily go up a division, but he squeezes down to get to this, uh, to get to, um, uh, uh, this weight. Now, he's got the power left hand. That's obviously his main weapon is his left hand. Now, the thing when I'm really piecing this together, now, I right away, when I was taking a look at this, I was on Till. I, I like Till. I said, he's going to go out there, home guy. That's always a scary part as well, where we take a look at it. That's where I was leaning right towards Till. I said, Till is going to be able to go out there, go through five rounds, and get this decision victory. I think if he fights smart, I think that's what happens. But the more that it's really talking about, these two want to press forward. They want to scrap. They want to brawl. They want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe in exchange. That pushes me more towards Masvidal. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that's exactly what's going to happen when two guys say we're going to stand and brawl. Masvidal does have wrestling background. He is very capable. He only uses that for the most, for the most part just as a defensive mechanism when guys are really trying to take him down. That's pretty much the way that he uses that. But he's got the ability to take Till down. And Till, on the other side of it, if they're talking about they're going to stand and bang, I think that works for Masvidal. I like the way that he pieces a lot of things together. And a lot of Till, basically 90% of Till's attacks are coming from the left side. He's got the light, he's got a, a snapping strong uh, left kick. He's obviously got the power left hand. But also, Masvidal is very good at catching leg uh, body kicks. He's done it throughout his career. If you really go back and take a look at it, he's, he's caught multiple, and he's able to really get guys to the ground doing that. That is an opening for Masvidal to take this to the ground. And as well as if um, Darren Till is unable um, to really work that, that, that body kick from the left side, he really is stuck using his left hand. So it really started pulling me towards Masvidal when you really start piecing it together. Masvidal's aggressive style also, I do like that style working towards this. And, you know, again, the arsenal of what Till has comes from that left side where Masvidal is, I believe, a lot more well-rounded from both sides. And really the striking advantage, I would say, would go to Masvidal. The power goes to Till. So I, I, with the odds being what they are at plus 210 and you've got Till at, at minus 260, I think that is way off. I think this is a fight that's a very, very 50-50 fight right down the middle. I think it's very close. I think it's going to be very close. So normally for me, when I'm taking a look at a fight and I feel it's a very much a 50-50 fight, I go with the underdog there because when I'm really taking a look at it, I think that the plus 210 odds is way too high 
for this kind of fight. Till's got the hometown going on him. There's a lot of money going on this guy. He's got a lot of hype behind him. He talks the talk. He lost a big fight. Looked really badly in that fight. And Masvidal coming off two losses, but has looked good in other spots. And same thing with Till. Till has looked good in other spots too. But I think this is going to be a situation where Masvidal is going to be able to push forward. He's going to be able to not give... Uh, till the uh, any advantages at all. I think that, again, that left side where all of his strikes come from, I think that the ATT team is going to be able to really work a great uh, game plan and strategy to help Masvidal get this victory. But again, for me, and I want to put this in at the end of all that being said, I am not betting much on this fight. This is more of a breakdown to get into it. I, don't, I want to say that on this fight, the you know, my free play, I will definitely be betting. Obviously, my best bet. But this one here, I'm just, I'm not huge on it. So I, I sprinkled in Masvidal in a parlay. And, and that's really, I'm just trying to leverage those odds. But overall, I'm really on Reyes. And obviously, 80% of my allotted money for this event is on my best bet play, which right now is for purchase. Take a look down at the link down below for the wager talk. Go to my profile. And that's really the breakdown there. So I'm curious what you guys think. I mean, people are all, all over the place with this. Who they like, Masvidal or Till. And it's really been great conversations. Again, check me out on Twitter, at Mr. UFC Vegas. Uh, always post a lot of stuff there as well. Conversations with people, always been great. And, um, you know, we will have the bet review show out on Sunday. We will uh, talk more UFC on our comment section here down below. So get involved, comment. Make sure you guys like, subscribe if you've not yet done so. And this is Kyle Anthony's UFC betting show, and I'll see you next time.